Here's a really great demo to start with very beginning uh, Unity students because it deals with uh, learning about what the different panes are, right? What the different windows mean. Uh, also with basic 3D game objects and a tiny bit of scripting and then a tiny bit of physics. So it's got a little bit of everything and it gives these guys a great intro and kind of uh, have some fun with the software before they're super uh, fluent in it yet. So the way that I start this out is by explaining about the two hierarchy and the scene view. Uh, and basically the idea that they're the same thing. If I click on the sun over here, it's the directional light in my hierarchy. The camera is the main camera. And likewise, if I click over here, um, these guys get selected. So it is kind of one, two ways of showing the same information. Then we go ahead and we actually go into the game object menu or, or the create menu here, they're the same. <clears throat> and create a 3D object and then choose plane. Now it gives us a mathematical plane, a 2D kind of area, and we can navigate around. We can navigate around this area by using the Option key. You notice my cursor turns into a little eyeball, and then we can click and drag and move around in the scene, which is pretty nice. Uh, we can also use our trackpad to zoom in and out. This works with the mice uh, and obviously with touchpads on like a laptop. I believe if we hold Control, uh, let's say Option click. There's a shift. There is a zoom also with hotkeys. Um, on all of our labs, we're able to use the, the zoom in. I believe middle mouse also, the scroll wheel, will do a zoom in as well. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do everything in Unity. The basic, so the basic ways that we move the camera are to rotate around a pivot point, like, the, like I'm doing now. Uh, we can also hold command and option together and we get this hand, and then we can click and drag around. And then I'm just trying for the zoom one more time. <laughs> and then the zoom is with the uh, scroll wheel or the touchpad. So with those three, we can actually look at anything in our scene and we can move anywhere we want to go. Some of the kids also like to use the arrow keys uh, to kind of fly around like in Minecraft. I find that in production, this is not super useful, but it is helpful sometimes for the students that are having a hard time with the two-handed uh, controls. Now, if we ever get really lost and feel like we can't see our scene anymore, right? We're upside down or something like that. Double click on anything in your hierarchy to get brought right to it, to put the focus back on that object. And you should be able to reorient yourself and figure that out. So the next thing that I have students do is to create a cube, 3D object cube. Now this time what I want you to pay attention to is the arrows, right? We haven't really messed around with that too much. Your cube may have appeared in different places uh, depending on where your focus was in your camera. So in my case, I just had to pull it up a little bit to be seen. Now right off the bat, you can move this around and see how you could use this to start building your world, right, or your characters. Uh, but you can also, you go ahead and use these tools up here in the top left to rotate, to switch to rotate mode. Now you can notice that you can either rotate it freestyle like I am by clicking anywhere inside of this orb, or you can actually click on one of the specific axes. So I'm just rotating on the Y now, uh, the local Y axis of the cube. And then finally, we have the scale tool and same deal. I can scale it in all directions at once or just in one direction at a time by using the specific arrows, the specific uh, kind of grabber's handles. Now, if I want to reset this, I'm going to have to introduce another window over here in Unity called the inspector window. If we've been paying attention, our inspector window is actually has been showing us our position, rotation, and scale broken down into X, Y, and Z axes. If we ever want to reset this, you can use the cogwheel to reset any of the individual uh, components, for instance, position, or just the full game object reset or component reset, I should say, that puts it back at 000, 000, 111 for the scale. In this case, I actually want this cube to fall over, so I'm going to lift it up a little bit so that it has some potential energy. Cool. Now, the next thing that we're going to take a look at is the third window here, which is the game window. The game window is actually coming from this main camera over here, and it's how uh, the player is going to see your game. Notice if I move the main camera game object, it actually is also moving the, the view in the game. So maybe I'll move this a little closer. Cool. Um, now, if I click play, I enter, I turn on Unity's game engine and actually start simulating the game. I'm, I'm actually playing right now. There's just no controls. There's nothing very interesting happening. So what I need to do is add a new component to this uh, cube in order to make it fall. And the name of this component is a rigid body. If I go into physics, rigid body, um, this has now entered this cube into Unity's physics engine. And 
when I play, we'll get a little bit of a simulation there. So it's falling down now. Now gravity affects it. And notice I can even still move it in the scene view even while it's playing. And this is a really helpful debugging tool while we're building games. Now the next thing that I'm going to do, and this is uh, where it gets fun, I think, for the first timers, is we're going to make this cube a little, I mean, sorry, this plane a little bit bigger with our scale tools. We're going to rotate it a tiny bit with our uh, rotation tools here. Notice I'm not clicking up here. I'm actually using hotkeys W, E, and R for translate, rotate, and scale. They're right in a row on the keyboard. It makes it really easy to use. Now I'm actually going to move my camera back a little bit so I get a nicer view. And then check this out. This is where kind of we start with the fun part. Uh, let me move my directional camera out of the way. Ooh, I'm sorry, my directional light. And then on my cube here, that remember falls down if I hit my play button. I'm going to use the command Command D to duplicate this cube, and then I'm going to move it. Oops, let me try that again. Click on the cube. Command D duplicates. I'm going to move it along one of the axes. Now I'm going to click on both cubes using Shift. I click on the first cube, hold shift, click on the second cube, duplicate. And I'll move these to the side. Now I've got four cubes. I click on the four cubes, command D, move. Now I've got eight cubes. Click on the eight cubes, command D, move. And you can see where this is going, right? We're gonna have a mess pretty soon. We can even rotate these too while we're at it. Uh, that could add a little bit of chaos to our, to our simulation once it's ready. Command D move it up. Now this is great practice also just with the uh, just with moving these tools around with using the hotkeys uh, and I find that for some first timers this is just a really helpful exercise to be able to navigate Unity both the camera and uh, the widgets, the translate widgets. Let's duplicate all of these guys, move it up. At this point I have something like 95. I find that the students will for sure crash Unity, at least some of them at this step. Uh, so one good thing might be to introduce the idea of saving this file. All we've got to do is hit Command S and a little dialog pops up. We can call this scene one and we'll have this exact configuration, this exact scene view and hierarchy now saved in case we crash things. I'm actually going to go a couple more. So let's duplicate this, move it up. And then last time we've got three or four hundred ish cubes now, Command D. And maybe I'll move these last ones kind of off to this side and then rotate around. Cool, looks like a mess. So now I'm looking kind of in this scene view, but also I'm looking in my game view. This is where the kind of the, the, the money shot's gonna be. Let's hit play and watch these objects fall. Cool, now if you haven't really played around with Unity, you're probably surprised how well this holds up. Um, it definitely is capable of doing a lot of physics simulations, handling a lot of this without too much lag. So that's cool. Um, if we had like 2,000, we'd probably crash. Um, any more than 10,000, I'd say we'd definitely crash. But yeah, that looks pretty good. You can see the other ones just falling down there forever. Now, the very last thing that I want to add uh, to this tutorial is the idea that, again, this is all still live. So if I were to click on the plane here, I can actually drag this down and sort of get some extra solves and see how that would work. I can rotate, throw things around. I think the kids are gonna have a lot of fun with this. It's a great introduction to Unity. Um, it doesn't require too much of anything. We haven't done any scripting yet, um, but we're having fun with the different components. So definitely try this out during class.